A lot of powerful and uplifting stories on this yeah. Thursday for you. So glad you're with us, everyone. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Robert. That story might make you tear up a little bit. We'll give you that advance notice, but it's definitely worth uh, waiting and watching because it, it's a special one here locally. Yes. And happy Earth Day, Yes, everybody. and we're looking forward yeah. to your story coming up. Uh, you <laughs> and I have been chatting about a really mm -hmm. fascinating stuff, so looking forward to that. Happy Earth Day to all of you at home here. Let's check and see how Mother Earth is uh, reacting here this morning <laughs> locally. It's a birthday. picturesque Earth Day out there. there. I mean, look at this. We've got cloudy conditions, but still a very calm, quiet start to your Thursday morning. It's 6.01 right now, and you see those birds flying in the wind, a little bit of a breeze out there. Overwhelmingly, satellite radar has just picked up on cloud cover, that deeper marine layer to start off the day, as opposed to actual measurable precipitation, more mist and sprinkling as opposed to anything really measurable. Uh, 60s are what we're looking at across the coast and inland for the afternoon highs today. Mountains are going to make it into the mid-50s. 80s for the deserts. We'll talk about a more pronounced, stronger system that's coming our way by the beginning of next week. This is going to be really mellow for today, but we'll talk about that stronger system coming next week in just a bit. Jenny's checking up on traffic, though. Well, it looks like you guys are doing your part for Earth Day because most people are staying home. No major volume out on the roads, minus a little bit of a buildup on the Coronado Bridge. Crash-wise, uh, nothing happening, so safe driving. Jenny, Evan, thank you. And we are staying on top of new developments this morning in the search for missing mother, Maya Miliete. Law enforcement agencies on the local and federal level are teaming up to investigate this case now. News aides Chris Groh joins us live in Chula Vista to explain more on this, as well as how the family is responding to all this. Chris? Yeah, we actually heard from Maya's sister and brother-in-law who told us that essentially, look, this is still being called a search effort, a missing person's case, despite the fact that now the FBI and NCIS are now involved in this case. However, we did learn one big update yesterday from the Chula Vista Police Department. Those loud bangs that we have been playing for you in this story so far. Those that sound like gunshots, well, they are being analyzed by the Chula Vista Police Department to see if they are indeed gunshots. And so investigators are taking that sound bite right there from that home surveillance system from a nearby neighbor to see if that was indeed gunshots captured on the night that Maya was last seen. Now, we've only played the audio for you to keep the identity in the home of the neighbor anonymous. Now, the police department also announced yesterday that they received no reports of gunfire that night. So that doesn't mean that gunfire didn't occur. It just means that no one called 911 to report it. Now, already 16 search warrants in the case have been served, including one on April 1st at the Encanto home of Larry Miliette's aunt and uncle, Larry being Maya's husband. Neighbors saw officers removing long rifles and boxes of evidence. Another search warrant was served on January 23rd at Maya's home, the one on Paseo Los Gatos in Chula Vista. Officers seized from there the family's black Lexus SUV with that personalized license plate, Melani. Now, again, May's sister and brother-in-law are glad that the federal agencies are involved, but it is still being called a missing persons case. So if there is anything that you know about Maya's disappearance or anything that could help investigators with this case, you're encouraged to call the Chula Vista Police Department. Eric and Netta. Chris Grow with that update. Thank you for that. We are learning more about a deadly officer involved shooting in Escondido. Police Chief Ed Varzo says the identity of the man who was killed will not be released yet, but he is known to police and has had several run ins with the law, according to the chief. Now, the incident started with reports of a man hitting cars with a metal pole. This was yesterday morning and police say he began moving towards an officer holding a two foot metal pry tool. And then when the man did not listen to orders, the officer opened fire. The witness says the officer's actions were unnecessary. He was going like this up toward the cop. And really, the, cop, the police officer had no reason to shoot him. Now, police do plan to release the body camera video. 20-year-old Dante Wright, who was fatally shot by police officers in Minnesota last week, will be laid to rest today. It comes on the heels of former officer Derek Chauvin's conviction for the murder of George Floyd just a few miles away. And now the Justice Department has announced it is launching an investigation into the Minneapolis Police Department. They will look into whether the department engages in unlawful policing and discrimination. Meanwhile, county supervisors have agreed to vote on a resolution supporting the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. 
The bill was recently passed by the House. It includes banning chokeholds at a federal level and allows the Department of Justice to subpoena local police departments. County leaders will vote whether or not to support it next month. While coronavirus vaccines are highly effective, San Diego County officials are now reporting what they're calling breakthrough COVID cases. 203 fully vaccinated San Diegans have now tested positive for COVID-19. More than half of them had no symptoms and none have been hospitalized. None of them died. Officials say San Diego's rate of breakthrough cases, though, is three times the national average. But they say that's because these reports come locally and then they move up to the national figures. Health experts have previously said breakthrough cases are possible. And it's not just any rite of passage. Today, history will be made after weeks of training and getting pushed to the limit. Oh, they have been pushed, that's for sure. Mm. News 8's Allison Royal joining us live at Camp Pendleton this morning. The first integrated platoon from MCRD just went through the crucible and learning a little bit about the crucible. <laughs> that is intense stuff. Oh, Hi, Allison. Unreal. Well, good morning. The Crucible is no easy feat, and for the first time in 100 years, MCRD here in San Diego is welcoming women. So I'm going to get out of the way and show you what we're working with here this morning. So you see what kind of looks like ants on the top of that hill? Well, one of them is Heather Hope, actually. But they're all going <laughs> over the hill to go meet up with some of the recruits. There are 54 women taking part in this this morning. They started with 59, but a couple got injured right in the beginning of this very rigorous 10-week process. So they started at about 3 o'clock this morning a really strenuous hike and in approximately 15 minutes those recruits are going to be coming down the hill that's why we're standing behind this flagpole we want to give them room and give them space so it's a 54 hour evolution started just a few hours ago and once these recruits get down here to the flagpoles they'll receive an eagle globe and anchor which some people call ega from their drill instructor they will also be called a marine for the first time so that symbolizes something incredibly special and the standards are incredibly high this is a six phase 13 week training with a graduation in the beginning of may mandated that uh, both marine corps training facilities um, uh, would not have segregated training um, by 2028 for, for San Diego so that we can highlight what changes need to happen, um, either construction, personnel, um, to be able to execute those. And something that's really important to mention, the men and women recruits are doing the exact same workout, same distance, same weight, same intensity, all of that good stuff. And let me tell you, from what I've seen so far, does not look like a walk in the park. Incredibly impressive and very grateful for all the service that they are putting in here in Oceanside. Yeah. So Ben and Eric, Boy. really exciting day. I'm going to catch up with them pretty soon. Yeah. Not physically catch up. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. You mean you're not going to go through it? Oh, man. Yeah, that, that, that looks grueling. Holy I cow. I mean, that many days of physical, mental challenge and then to, like no sleep, right, Allison? Yeah. Pretty minimal is my yeah. understanding. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm telling you. They're going to be drained by the time you catch up with them, and uh, they might be like, get those cameras That's, out of my face. That is <laughs> why yeah. they are the best of the best right Probably. there. Incredible training. All right, Allison, thanks for that. Appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine? It's like oh. over 50 hours of just Unreal. being pushed to your <laughs> limit. Ooh. I'm tired, like, after I take a nap. <laughs> that hill alone? <laughs> I wake up from a nap and I'm more tired than oh, when boy. I Oh, boy. I thought you were going to say after a half-hour hour workout, but I no. Mean, just after that, a nap. That, too. You took it to like, a new low. Even an half-hour hour workout, like, that takes a lot out of me. And, yeah. I mean, hey, we complain about our schedule and the, you know, lack of sleep that we get, right. but... Hey, props to them. Wow. Um, respect, yeah. Whew, uh, <laughs> happy Earth Day, guys. 6.09 right now. Uh, we are trudging through the day with that cloud cover. I apologize if you were hoping for a sunny, warm Earth Day. That will not be the case. But if that's what you were hoping for, well, then look forward to the weekend. Saturday and Sunday are both going to be warmer, drier, sunnier days ahead. For today, though, we're hanging on to quite a bit of that cloud cover. A 30 and 40% shot at rain across your coastal and inland communities. When I say rain, I want to adjust that and say more like a misty, 
seen a drizzle, if anything, maybe one one hundredth of an inch. So measurable at times, but still very, very light. Fog is definitely likely over the mountaintops. We've seen that on our live cameras out there and the deserts are making their way to the 80s with sunshine. So here's the setup overhead. The next 48 hours do show those showers come to an end. We see those clouds subside quite a bit toward this afternoon even and then that deeper marine layer to start off tomorrow morning before those clouds clear out and move toward partly cloudy conditions. Same situation goes for your Saturday. We'll have that marine layer to kick off the morning. No precipitation expected and then those clouds clear out and leave us with sunny conditions. We'll make it back to the mid and upper 60s Saturday and Sunday. A much stronger storm system comes through for Monday. That's going to knock those temperatures down quite a bit. However, the more important thing to keep an eye on for Monday of next week is going to be that rain. We're expecting about a quarter of an inch, maybe even half an inch of accumulating rain. It's going to be a wet one out there for Monday of next week. So watch out for the clouds today and maybe a little bit of a breeze, but more measurable precipitation expected by next week.